In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you the power of the noise texture in adding realism to your artworks. I'm also going to show you how to add atmosphere and depth of field. Hey guys, welcome to this video. My name is Nori Radwan. I am the concept artist for this channel and you are tuned to photomanipulation.com. Making a full length tutorials like this is very hard for me because I have to record myself making the artwork first and then I will have to add the narration after in the editing. And because English is not my main language, I'll be making a lot of mistakes spelling some words and then I will have to remove them and narrate from the beginning. So what I'm trying to ask you here is kindly, if you like this tutorial, make sure to click on the like button. Also leave me a supportive comment and that will encourage me to make more tutorials like this in the future. And without any further ado, let's start with the tutorial. The first thing I did is I cut the plants from these complicated images. And the way to do it is by cropping the image the first. And this is just to focus on the area that I want to cut the uh, plants from. And then I duplicate the layer and I turn it to black and white by clicking on shift Control u then using the lasso tool, I will select the areas that I don't want to be in my selection. And then uh, I duplicated the layer again. Don't mind that, it's, it's not necessary. It's just because I'm making the tutorial. So I select everything and then I make a feather to it to make that uh, blur between the edges uh, of my selection and the rest of the image. Then with the uh, levels, that's Control L. I try to make the contrast between the edges of the selection and the rest of the image. And again with the lasso tool I select the white areas that's left from the uh, levels. And I click on shift F5, that's the shortcut for the fill and I choose black and I fill them with black. Now with a curves that's control M, I'm going to make a very high contrast between the uh, bright areas of the leaves and the shadows of the image. You can uh, choose to work with levels by clicking on Ctrl L, but I went with the uh, curves because it gives you more uh, control of the different shades of the image. I got that. Now I'm going to click Ctrl A. That will select the whole image, the canvas, and I'm going to use that as a mask. So I'm going to duplicate the uh, image and I'm going to add a mask to it and enter it by clicking and holding Alt, then click on the mask and paste it right there. And now, as you can see, this uh, image that we created is now a mask for the uh, original image. I created a gray layer uh, beneath it to see my selection. Uh, and as you can see, it's not the best yet. While I was clicking on the mask, I click it on select and mask, and then I selected the object aware. And we are going to click on select and mask multiple times till we get a uh, nice results. And as you can see right now, I'm just trying to exp experiment with this select and mask till I get something uh, good. And so I'm going to duplicate the image multiple times. And every time I duplicate, I uh, do a select and mask step. And my goal here is to restore as much details as I can in the uh, edges. That's by adding radius, contrast and shift, shift edge. And then click OK and I'm going to duplicate it again. And every time I duplicate the image, I click on the mask and I go to select and mask again. And I'm going to try and add different settings to get uh, different areas. And that's an example for it. As you can see, I didn't get these areas in the first mask. So I'm going to try and add them in this layer. Adding a feather and smooth sometimes work. Then click OK. And as you can see, when I show the first layer, I get different areas. I'm going to make the gray layer darker to see the selection better. And also because the uh, scene that we are working on is going to be uh, at night, at night time. And also it's going to be uh, atmospheric. This time I chose the color aware because as I told you, I'm going to try and get as much different areas that I can. The first I select the object and now it's the color and also check the smart radius because it might give you uh, better uh, results. If not, you can uncheck it. I don't want you to copy me because some of you might work on different images. So the goal here is just to get the best selection as you can see in the preview in front of you. Also try to use the select and mask tools to uh, fix 
areas that you don't want in the selection. Then click OK. And as you can see, we got new uh, areas in our selection and I'm going to start fixing the areas that I don't want. And that's by selecting them with the lasso tool and then remove them from the masks. And then select all of the layers and merge them together in a new layer. If you don't like the last selection, use it as a mask and add it to a duplicated layer of the image. And then go to select, click and hold shift and click on select and mask. And maybe add a radius and check the smart radius to give you better results with a soft edges. And this is going to be the selection that I'm going to use. And then I used the same techniques or the same steps to cut the plants from this image right here. The only thing that I added is after I finished all of the layers, I clicked on each mask and then I clicked on Ctrl L to bring the levels menu. And then by moving the mid-tone slide, I restore some details in the edges, as you can see right now. And then I applied the same steps for this image right here. With this one, after I turned the image to black and white, I went to image menu and I clicked on apply image that will add a contrast to the image. And then I followed the black areas with the lasso tool to separate the plants from the rest of the background. If you are not satisfied with your selection, duplicate the original image layer and then click and hold control to select one mask and then click and hold control and shift to select the other. Then select all the masks and use them as one mask to the original image layer. Then go to select and mask and add radius. And that might add better results to your selection. And then I got this astronaut image and to select it, I used the select object tool. Of course, it's not going to do a good job at first. So I used the lasso tool to fix the areas that was messed up. Then I added a black layer beneath and I start to add lightness to it by clicking on control U that will add the hue and saturation. And when I add the lightness, now I can see the strokes, these white strokes, as you can see in the video. And with the lasso tool, I start to highlight them and remove them. And then in the artwork document, I added this black layer and then I clicked on control A to select the whole canvas. And then I clicked on the lasso tool and I right clicked and then I selected the transform selection. I put the value of 33% uh, in both height and width. And then I started to slide the grids to the edges of that selection. And then I went to view and locked the guide. So I don't move the lines while I'm working. That will add the rule of third lines. And then based on these lines, I'm going to start placing my objects. To add the atmospheric background, I used the gradient tool, the transparent one and then I changed the mode to radial gradient. I put a value of 20% as you can see in the color menu, and then I start to slide from the top. Then I increased the value from the color menu, and I started to slide from the top, but in the top areas without affecting the bottom areas. I locked the layer of the gradient so I don't paint outside it and every time I add the value to make it brighter from the top. I changed the gradient tool mode to linear gradient again, and I continued with the sliding. To add color to that gradient, I used levels adjustment layer. I clipped it to the gradient layer and I changed the blending mode to color. Then I added cyan from the red channel and blue from the blue channel. And I decreased the opacity.
then add a new layer and fill it with black then go to filter noise add noise use the same settings and then go to blur and click on blur and then click on blur more decrease the opacity and change the blending mode to screen that will add some extra realism to it and then I started to place the plants that I selected in the beginning of the video if one of the plants that you selected is not solid enough you just duplicate the layer of it three or four times and merge them together and make sure every time you add an object select the whole canvas and crop it just to not make your document large and photoshop will start to lag I added this image as a background and then I moved it beneath the atmosphere layer and then I went to filter, blur and lens blur and I added blur to it you can use my settings or you can just make your own settings just make sure it's not too blurred just to a point where it's not distracting the eye of the viewer and also to add that depth of field lock to it then I used the technique from the beginning of the video to cut the plants but this time to cut the sky from the background I used levels this time to make the uh, contrast between the sky and the rest of the plants then with the lasso tool I selected the plants and then you can use the shift plus f5 or the pack tool to fill it with black now I'm going to use this image as a mask click ctrl a to select the canvas and ctrl c to copy it then add a mask to the background image enter the mask by clicking and holding alt and paste it now ctrl i to inverse the selection then click on the mask and go to select click and hold shift and select and mask add radius and then click OK. Apply the mask and move it beneath the atmosphere layer and I scaled it up. And now it's more fit into the scene and I cropped it. If you like the techniques and the tips and tricks you have seen so far in this video, you can find more in my digital landscape reloaded course. The link is going to be down in the description. And let's continue with the video. Now I'm going to start fixing the values of the plants and the background. I add exposure adjustment layer and I made the background darker and add contrast to it and the same thing with the plants in the front. My goal here is just to make everything uh, dark because it's going to be a night scene. Don't make it too dark to the point where the uh, details are not shown anymore. I also applied uh, the exposure layer to the uh, atmosphere layer to make it darker too. And then with a gradient tool with the reflected mode, I painted black on the mask to restore some light above the astronaut. With a soft brush, I sampled the color from the blue areas in the astronaut suit. And I added an empty layer set to color blending mode and I clipped it to the astronaut and I started to paint on the yellow areas to get rid of them. And then I added exposure adjustment layer and clipped it to the astronaut and made it darker and I added the mask to it and converted it to black and with a soft brush with white color start to paint um, on the areas that are bright and I want it to be dark. It's just like a dodge and burn. And then I duplicated the astronaut at the top with a back background and I turn it to black and white and start to click on apply image uh, two times or three times till I get a mask of the bright areas of the astronaut. It's like the first technique I did in the first video to cut the plants but this time I used this mask for a exposure adjustment layer uh, and that's just to affect the bright areas to make them darker. Then I clicked on the mask and with Control L levels I start to spread it just by moving the mid-tone slide. I clicked and hold control to select the mask and then I clicked on the astronaut layer and went to select, select and mask and I added radius to get a different mask and I get the perfect one because now I selected the front of the suit of the astronaut and while the selection is highlighted I clicked on shift plus F5 and then I chose the white color and now I can affect the front of the suit as well. Here you can just see me uh, replacing some plants and duplicating some plants just to fill the background and try to make the scene more interesting. And here I fixed the value of these plants. 
by making them darker and add contrast to them. Uh, I duplicated the layer of the, uh, the atmosphere and I put it at the top, but I'm going to use it for later, so I'm going to hide it for now. And then I went back to fix some values of the plants that need to be fixed, like this one. I made it darker and I moved it from that place. And now it looks more fitting to the scene. Here I start to duplicate the plants layers and I turned the backup layer to red color as you can see. So when I mess up with the plants, I can always go back and get the backup. And I tried to add blur to it from the lens blur menu, but it didn't work very well, so I chose the so I chose the field blur instead. And that's of course to add the depth of field to the image. You might ask why not use the technique from the tips video. The reason is because this image or this scene is not finished yet. I duplicated the layer of the front plants and I flipped it on the horizon line. And then I increased the scale of it. And of course I placed it and I cropped the image of it. And because it's close to the camera, I tried to blur it as well. I found some mistakes from that image, so I select them with the lasso tool and I remove them. As I told you before, the lens blur didn't work well, so what I did instead is I used the field blur and it worked better. And then I start to blend the plants with the background and that's by adding hue and saturation adjustment layer and increase the lightness. Then I add levels adjustment layer set to color blending mode and I clip it to the plants and I add the cyan and the blue color. Make sure to not make it too saturated but if you do just decrease the opacity. And then I did the same with the rest of the plants in the background. Instead of making levels adjustment layer to each plant, what I do is I just duplicate the first levels adjustment layer and I apply it to the rest of the plants. And then I just start to decrease and decrease the opacity to uh, blend the color. I went back to the uh, first layer, which is the plants in the front, and I added the field blur to them. And it worked better than the lens blur. Then I added the hue and saturation adjustment layer and I increased the lightness of the uh, plants in the midground. And of course I applied the levels adjustment layer of the color to them. Now that the values and the colors are correct, let's start to add the bright areas. To add the highlights, just duplicate a layer of the object that you want to add the highlight to. Turn the blending mode to screen and add contrast using either levels or uh, curves. I used curves. Then add the mask to it and turn it to black and with a soft brush and white color start to paint on the areas that you want to be bright. After you finish, click on the layer and click on Ctrl B. That's to add the color balance menu. It's up to you to add the color that you like, but for me, I chose a red and blue color. You can copy me or you can just use your own color, depends on your scene. And then I went to add the highlights to the rest of the plants. For the bright layer of the astronaut, I used the image that I made before as a mask. And then I chose the gradient tool, the transparent one, and with the a black color, I dragged from the bottom areas. And then I went to paint light on the other areas that I felt light might cast on them. Then I clicked on the layer and I clicked Ctrl U, 
and then I decrease the saturation to get rid of that blue tone. Then with a control B color balance, I added blue and I clicked OK. For the plants that had bright leaves, what I did is I added hue and saturation adjustment layer above them and I decreased the lightness. And then I added lighting to the plants in the front. And also I did the same with the plants that are behind the astronaut. I used the circle selection and I filled it with white and then I added a new layer and added feather and painted again. Then I used Ctrl U, hue and saturation and I decreased the lightness. I locked the layer and I started to increase the value from the color menu. Every time I increase the value, I start to uh, drag in a smaller range and then turn it to screen blending mode. The reason why I decrease the lightness is because if you leave it white and you add the levels adjustment layer to add the color, it's not going to add it. I add levels adjustment layer and I clip it to that light and I add cyan and blue. Again, make sure it's not too saturated, but if you make it saturated, you can fix it by just decreasing the opacity. I went back and I added hue and saturation adjustment layer to the astronaut and I increased the lightness. And then I added a new hue and saturation adjustment layer and I increased it even more. At first, I thought to drag with the uh, gradient tool, uh, but it didn't look realistic. So what I did instead is I turned it to lightness blending mode and I copied the noise texture and I pasted it on the hue and saturation and I dragged from the bottom. And now, as you can see, it's more realistic than before. Then I added levels adjustment layer set to color blending mode to the astronaut and I increased the cyan and I added blue and of course I decreased the opacity. Then I added hue and saturation adjustment layer and I decreased the saturation from the astronaut. Make sure every time you change the color to zoom out and see the image in a smaller view and check if everything is correct. I added an exposure adjustment layer and I made the astronaut darker. I pasted the noise texture to that layer and with a gradient tool, I dragged from the top and the reason why I added is just because I wanted to make the astronaut darker from the bottom areas. And then I duplicated that layer and I delete the mask. I made it just a bit brighter and then I added the mask and I filled it with black and with a gradient tool and white color started to drag from the bottom. To add more depth to the image, I added a new layer and filled it with black and moved it to the top. And then I went to filter, pixelate, add mesotint and chose coarse dots, then click OK. Now increase the scale of it in both height and width by 300%. Then crop it and then add blur to it, maybe two or three pixels. And then click Ctrl L and add contrast between the white dots and the background. Get something that looks like dust. Then increase the scale again and crop it. This time go to Filter, Blur, and click on Lens Blur. Try to get a bokeh texture. Change the blending mode to screen and move it to the bottom right beneath the atmosphere layer. 
then copy the noise texture and add it as a mask to that bokeh or that dust. And as you can see now, it looks more realistic. Then I got levels adjustment layer from the other layers and clipped it to that dust layer to add the colors. And then I duplicate it and move it to the top right above the astronaut and then I applied the mask of the noise and decreased the opacity and with a new mask invert it to black and use the gradient tool to restore the dust in the edges of the canvas and then I used a soft brush and I start to change the value from the color menu and then I start to paint with a low value on the areas that I want to add the light to, the volumetric light. And then I increase the value and start to paint on the same areas but in a small range. I change the blending mode to screen. And I added a levels adjustment layer and I clipped it to it and I added cyan and blue color and then I decreased the opacity and I changed the blending mode to color. And then I did the same thing with the plants. And I changed the blending mode to linear dodge. And I selected the layer and made a mask from it. Then I clicked Ctrl L to bring the levels menu. And I moved the midtone slide and the dark slide to the right side. And then I applied the mask. And I pasted the noise texture on the lights of the astronaut as a mask. And then I entered the mask. And what I tried to do here is I wanted to make it less effective by clicking Ctrl L and then uh, moving both the slides of the dark and the white areas. But uh, this was the wrong uh, way to do it. If you want to do it, you just decrease the uh, destiny of the mask. And I will show you that uh, later in the video. I duplicated the noise mask from the uh, astronaut lights to the plant slide layer. And then I added the color to the light of the plants. And that's by clicking on Ctrl B, Color Palettes. I went back and changed the blending mode to Color Dodge instead. And I duplicated the layer and changed the blending mode of it to Linear Dodge again. And then I applied the mask. Then I Ctrl selected the layer and I added the mask from the mask icon. I decreased the flow of the soft brush and started to paint above the light of the astronaut's suit. I paint in a strong white bright color uh, close to the suit and then I decrease the flow and paint in a wide range. And the shortcut for changing the brush size is to click and hold ALT the right mouse button and move the mouse to the right and the left side. And then I pasted the noise texture to that new layer. Here I realized that the levels technique didn't work, so what I did instead is I just decreased the destiny. And that works better. And then I added levels adjustment layer, and I clipped it to it, and I added the cyan and the blue color. And then I had to decrease the lightness of it, so the colors will be shown. And then I applied the mask and I control selected the layer and I added the mask from the make a mask from the selection icon. And with A levels, I start to restore some of that flare. I added a new layer and I started to paint in the same step as I did before.
But this time, every time I increase the uh, value, I paint not in the middle of that circle, but on the right side of that circle. First, make sure to lock it and then start to paint brighter on the right side. Just like that, and then with the Ctrl T free transform tool, I made it in a shape of the spotlight, as if if as if there was light coming out from that light source in the astronaut suit. And then I Ctrl T the layer and I added the mask to make it tight. I selected the gradient tool, the transparent one with a white color, and I changed the blending mode to uh, between the linear light overlay and vivid light, and I started to make. Uh, the shape of it looks more like a spotlight that's coming from like a flashlight. Overlay blending mode uh, and up the uh, blending mode that works for this image. So I changed it to overlay and I dragged from the right side and I applied the mask. And with a uh, eraser tool, I start to erase from the areas that's coming outside from that light source. And then I unlocked it, and then I changed the blending mode of it to screen. Then I clicked on Ctrl A to select the canvas, and then went to image menu and clicked on crop. And then I clicked on Ctrl T, that's the shortcut for the free transformation. And then clicking and holding the Ctrl key, I start to tweak the squares to change the direction of that light. And again, I cropped it. And then I duplicated the mask of the noise texture to it. Here I made a mistake. I was supposed to decrease the destiny, but uh, instead I started to increase the feather. Uh, it looked weird at first, and I was asking myself why it's not working, uh, but I will be uh, fixing that mistake later in the video. So don't make this mistake and decrease the destiny instead. I also duplicated one of the levels adjustment layers that's set to color blending mode and applied it to that new uh, light to add the cyan and the uh, blue tone to it. I went back to the plants layers and I added lightness from the hue and saturation adjustment layer to help blend the uh, plants with the uh, background and added another hue and saturation adjustment layer and increased the lightness even more, but that will cause uh, some highlights in the leaves. To fix that, I add a third hue and saturation adjustment layer and I decrease the lightness and that will be above the layer of the plant. And I did the same with the uh, plants on the right side. This time I used the noise texture as a mask for the new hue and saturation adjustment layer. And then using the gradient tool, the transparent one, on the mode normal and black color. I selected the mask of the hue and saturation and I dragged from the bottom areas. I added a new hue and saturation adjustment layer to the plant in the left side and I increased the lightness. That caused the uh, leaves to be bright so I went to the first hue and saturation adjustment layer and I decreased the lightness and then I based a noise texture to it. To add a reflection to the helmet of the astronaut, I used the 3D menu and I turned it to panorama. And here randomly I started to uh, tweak the settings till I get uh, a good result because I never used this uh, menu before, I was just trying it. After I turn it to panorama, I use the uh, 3D menu again, this time to turn it to a sphere. I try to match the side of the sphere to the astronaut helmet. I selected the helmet of the astronaut with the lasso tool, and I use the uh, select and mask to add feather to it. And then I went to the image of the sphere and I copied it and went back to my work document and clicked on shift Control alt v key that will paste the helmet to the mask. I decreased the scale of it to match it with the size of the helmet. 
And then I duplicate the layer and turn it to black and white by clicking on Shift Control U. I used the same technique from the beginning of the video to separate the leaves from the background in that image. And then I used it as a mask and applied it to the sphere layer. And as you can see now, it's only the plants that's shown in the helmet. Then I used the gradient tool, the transparent, with a black color and the radial mode to restore the face of the astronaut in the middle. I add a levels adjustment layer set to color blender mode and I add the cyan and the blue and I decrease the opacity. And here I got another image of plants. I cut it using the same technique and I fixed the values and the colors of it and that's the final result. I duplicated the spotlight layer and I removed the noise mask from it. And then I click on control and select it and add a mask from the selection. Then I use levels and start moving the slides till I make it more visible. Using the control T, free transform, I start to stretch and move the direction and the size of that new spotlight layer that I just created. Select the canvas with Ctrl A and then go to image and crop. And then go to filter, blur gallery and field blur. I'm going to put that point on the uh, left side and add another point to try and make it uh, blurred from the left side but not in the right side. So I'm going to take that point and put a value of zero. And with another point, I'm going to add um, from 50 to 100. And that's the result. And I decrease the opacity. And then I duplicated the noise texture mask from the layer beneath it and apply it to the new one. Here when I entered the mask, I found out the mistake that I made before when I increased the feather and did not uh, decrease the destiny. So I'm going to fix it right now. I added new mask and clicked and hold alt and then clicked on it to enter it and filled it with black and I added a new noise texture. Then went to blur and clicked blur, then blur and blur more. That's worked better. I entered the mask and then I increased feather instead of decreasing the destiny and here where I found the mistake I realized. So I decreased the destiny and I went to the mask of the layer beneath it and I decreased the feather and the destiny. And as you can see it gives us a better results. I grouped the layers together and I decreased the opacity of the group to 50%. I went back to the astronaut uh, light reflection image and I add a lens blur to it. I decreased the uh, radius just a bit. And then I went to change the blending mode to screen and go to uh, filter. And I added blur to it from the uh, field blur menu from the blur gallery. and I increased the blur just a bit and clicked OK. I added a mask to it and I inverted it to black color and using the gradient tool and the radial uh, mode, I started to paint in some of those areas to add that light reflection of the bloom effect as it was like a uh, lens flare effect. Using the circle selection tool, I selected these two areas and made like uh, a stroked circle shape And I made it look like a light, just like I did with the uh, left side light that I made before. Instead, this time I'm not going to add a cyanish and bluish color to it. I'm going to make it look like it's orange. Click on the layer two times and add outer and inner glow. In the inner glow, make sure it's normal and the size is decreased. And in the outer glow, increase the size and change the blending mode to screen. Try to make the color orange in both inner and outer glow. I went back to the plants layers and started to make them uh, blurred from the edges to add more depth of field to the scene. 
I felt that the background was empty, so what I did is I duplicated some layers of plants and I flip, flipped them and changed the position of them just to fill the background. And of course, I added lightness to them from the hue and saturation adjustment layer to, make, to give them the feel that they are far from the other plants. I also duplicated some of the bright layers just to add some blur to them, such as this one. I went back to the background image and I decided to add a bright layer to it too, so I duplicated it, changed the blending mode to screen, and with Ctrl L levels, I made the contrast, and then I decreased the opacity and added a mask to it, turned it to black and drag from the top areas and that just filled the image a bit more and added details to the background. Remember the atmosphere layer that we put at the top? I went back to it, I put it at the very top and I added mask to it and then I entered the mask by clicking and holding alt. I filled it with black and added a noise texture and blurred it one time and I decreased the opacity around 25% and then I got this image and I took a butterfly from it I placed it at the work and I highlighted with a square and using the laser tool I deselected from the face or the body of it and I made sure to, to add a feather to that uh, deselection and then I went to blur, radial blur, and add spin by one pixel, and just to give it the feel that this butterfly is moving uh, its wings, just to add some action and movement to the scene. And then I fixed the values of it by adding an exposure adjustment layer and decreasing the exposure and, and then hue and saturation adjustment layer to add the lightness. And then levels adjustment layer that I took from other layer, to add the color and I decrease the opacity of it and then I added the bright layer to it by duplicating it and turn it to screen blending mode and with Control L levels I add the contrast and then I click on Control U that will bring the hue and saturation and I decrease the saturation and then I add the color from the color P color balance that worked then I add the mask I invert it to black and then with the gradient tool using the uh, linear gradient I start to add the light from the light direction using the same technique before to add the light to the astronaut and the plants I did the same technique to the butterfly painting with a soft brush and a lower value then I increase the value and paint in a lower range Then I add a new empty layer and with a soft brush I sample the color from the butterfly and start to paint in a high range with a low flow. Then I change the size of the brush and start to paint in a lower range and I place the noise texture mask with the lower destiny and that's supposed to be the haze light or let's say the fog light. I selected the butterfly layer with the uh, light layer that I paint and I merge them and this is going to be the reflection of the butterfly on the astronaut helmet. I change the blender mode to color dodge and then I resize it and change the position of it and flip it. And that's by clicking Ctrl T, that's the shortcut for the free transformation tool. And while I'm on the butterfly layer, I selected the helmet and went to blur radial blur and I added more spin to add blur to it using the same color that I sampled from the butterfly I start to paint on the light of the astronaut suit and also the reflection of the butterfly in his helmet and I increased the uh, value and the hue and the saturation from the color menu and start to paint in lower range
I added a levels adjustment layer to the astronaut and filled it with green and cyan. Also gave it a little bit of yellow and that's just to add some of the green uh, plants reflection on his suit. So I changed the uh, mask to black color and using the gradient tool I paint from the uh, bottom areas and start to paint on his shadows. I added another coarse dots texture from the mesotint from the pixelate menu and then I went to increase the size of it just a bit, maybe 150% uh, in both the height and width and then I added blur to it and I cropped it. And added contrast using the control L. Then change the blender mode to screen. Add a mask and turn it to black and with a soft brush and white color start to paint on the spotlight that's coming from his suit. Then select the texture and go to filter, blur gallery, field blur and uh, put one point on the light source from his suit and make it on 0% and put another point on the left side and make it on maybe 5 pixels and click OK. While clicking on that texture, click on Ctrl U that will bring the hue and saturation adjustment layer and decrease the lightness just a bit, maybe uh, minus 10. And then add a levels adjustment layer and add a cyan and blue color and decrease the opacity. I added a curves adjustment layer clip to the astronaut and decreased the dark areas just a bit and added contrast and then using the radial blur I started to add that contrast in the middle of his body on the areas that are not facing the light source and then I decreased the opacity I added a new layer and filled it with black and went to filter, render and lens blur and I chose the uh, fourth option and I change the brightness to 50% and I put it in the middle and I click OK. Then I turn that image to black and white by clicking on Shift Control U and I put it on the uh, astronaut uh, suit and I change it to screen blending mode and I rotate it just a bit and that will add some lens flare uh, effect to the light source. And I blur it just a bit from the field blur and I click OK. I did not like the high contrast between that plant and the plant behind it. So what I did is I added hue and saturation adjustment layer and added lightness to match the value of it with the value of the plants be uh, behind it. And then I used the gradient tool to remove the mask from the bottom areas. And then went to lock for that uh, layer that's casting that bright areas in the uh, bottom. And I removed them with the eraser. And that fixed that area. Now it's time for the color grading and the final adjustments. I used the camera raw filter for this. With the camera raw filter, it doesn't need any explaining. Uh, it's just settings that you can uh, adjust by yourself or you can just copy my settings that I'm going to use right now on the screen and I will leave it right here. And then I used this tool and I used the radial gradient and I took this circle as a mask. I start to shape it and I inversed the mask and I decreased the exposure. And I increased the blacks, the contrast. And I decreased the featherness of it and I added the temperature of the uh, blue and the tint of the green just a bit uh, 
this is the final color grading for the image. Click on Shift Control Alt E that will merge all the layers as one layer at the top and then turn it to Smart Objects at the amount of uh, 180 and then go to the mask, turn it to black and with a soft brush, white color and 100% of opacity and flow, start to paint on the areas that you want to be sharp. For me, it is the astronaut and the butterfly and the plants behind the butterfly. And this is it for this tutorial. I have explained these techniques before in my latest video. So if you find some of these tips and tricks or the techniques hard to understand, make sure to go and visit my latest video here, where I explain these techniques more in depth. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also follow us on our social medias. And the link for my digital landscape reloaded course it's going to be down in the description. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I will see you in the next tutorials. Peace.